Hey guys, M12 Wardock here. I am back with another video, and today's strategy analysis will be on the third, fourth, and fifth missions of the Risk Factions campaign. So, starting out with the third one, we have Control Next Gen Bay for Guaranteed Card as one objective. Next one is Control for Solar Arrays. And we'll get an airfield. Additional maneuver for controlling an enemy capital. You technically need your own to, in order to win. Because we're using Electrum Engine that we are doing in campaign. It is War Room Victory Settings. So that's three v so three objectives and hold your capital. Um, control War Paw. Starting maneuver. Defense Die. Complete. Control two complete continents. Then take over 9 territories in one turn. Harvest 12 energy resources. That one's going to be hard, but airfield, I guess, is kind of worth it. 2 extra troops. Control 2 enemy capitals. Alright. So, let's see here. Well. Volcano remains dormant. Well. Let's see here. To start this off, I'm going to be, uh... Not too happy with the current settings. I mean, it could be better. But look at this. We have... Eight territories all connected to each other here. So, if I focus on, say, get rid of this one... Here. Take out this one here. And get control of the human capital. Take out this one to get a solar shield thing. We have control... But getting two more territories, but reducing this territory and this territory to not being borders. We don't have to arm them because they're not going to be able to be attacked over here. The only downside, though, is that we also have to focus on our capital here in the red, the red robot capital here. Now, let's just say this is, I think, a pretty good starting spot, but not the best one. A pretty good starting spot. It could have been better, but like I, but like in campaign, we don't manually pick our territories. But you have a chance to have better ones because it's in the interest of every other player to probably pick what's best for them so that they have a better start rather than trying to screw you over because then you t you will screw each other over and then that's not good in the long run. Either player. All right. So, we zoom out here. We have Warpaw, Next Gen Bang, were in the two, I believe, that had anything to do with control of those for objectives. Right now, the Yellow or Cats looks like they have the best chance by taking out these two if they wanted to. They're also going to have to deal with the humans in order to get through that. Now, Magma, we have control of two out of four of the thermal generators, so getting, I believe, getting one of these, this reactor for the airfield would be good, but we need to put a lot of extra troops there and hope that the volcano doesn't go off anytime soon, which is a big risk, and why usually when I start, I usually try to form a border, but make sure none of my bordering territories are on the volcano area. These three here. Because this, this territory here, that one, and that one. Are, uh, that I have are, are borders, but they also could be destroyed at any moment. Which I don't like either. So if anything, I'd send all of these troops down here to attack this territory. I would put troops here to attack this territory here, put troops here, and attack here. And that way, we have only, we still have two territories that are borders on the volcano, which is still not good, but they still gain territory, and it puts us in a better position to better our borders next turn, and so forth. Now, on the other hand, I like to take a stop taking a look at so much of the robots here and focus more on humans at this point and what objectives they can complete. So, 
Doesn't look like they're gonna go for a next-gen bay. Eh, maybe not Warpaw. Maybe. Because the way I see it here is that they can very easily surround... They pretty much almost surround the cat's capital and the humans can very easily make use of that because the cats know that they can't win in War Room without their capital. And, I mean, the only other way you can win without War Room is uh, just take over every territory and happen to not get any of the objectives. I mean, I guess you could theoretically do that and still win, but at the same time here... If they do that, I feel like they're going to funnel more of their resources into Warpaw, where they have bigger territories, and send them down to you or into Garrison, provided that the robots don't go for it first, which also makes sense here as well. Now, largely in part, I feel like we have a big press. The robots have a big presence in the red area in the middle. And smaller presence on the left and right. Whereas it's a big presence on one side and a big presence on another side for yellow. And it looks like green is a little bit all over the board. Somewhat centralized in the middle. So I feel like green is going to, or the humans is going to fall first in this situation. Red's going to win and yellow's going to... It's probably going to fight red and green, um, take territory from green, but ultimately they're just going to lose out to uh, the robots in the end. In that, But the, I wouldn't say that's 100% accurate due to, I'm going to leave some room for error due to the unpredictability of the volcano and whether or not it's going to remain dormant or not long enough to set up borders and who's going to be who's going to be vulnerable to who and who's going to attack. At said points after volcano goes off, but like I said, I don't like to have it as I don't like to have volcano area as borders whatsoever. So, given this and the fact that red here has the initiative, I feel like they're gonna be in the best area to set themselves up, go for this, reduce their. Um, Increase territory size, and, and to an extent, still keep the same number of territories. In increase territory size, but increase the number of border territories. In some cases, in some cases, you're just remo increasing territory, but uh, decreasing the number of uh, territories that are actual borders that you have to worry about defending. Because you can eliminate some early on and so forth. Um... For cats, I feel like if they go for directly for next gen bay, I feel like they just need to take out four more territories. They'd only have to defend three territories. That would be assuming that um red would be the smart ones and go for uh warden here. And that's the or because you can actually uh increase your number of territories, get an objective or steps towards an objective, and make a big border. Although, if anything, I think Red would probably want to go for this one, Warden. Uh, check him. And Silica. That way, they have a three-thing border here that's not Volcano. And then try and go for Black Rock, where the Cat's Capital is. Partrin, whatever that is. And uh, Section 82. I feel like would be a great place for them to seal off borders. Now, another good place for the humans to seal off their borders would probably be go for Carpal Coast. And then go for... Um, Laugh Rock, and then go for Section 82, and try and take out those three. That way they have a presence there, but what they currently have, they have an extension to the border, onto the volcano area, but that could, all their tr extra trips could be removed and wiped out completely if the volcano goes off, 
but at least they have some territory there, and they can send territory troops from their border to there as sort of like to act as a buffer to prevent them from actually going in and taking out their territories, but at least they can still use it to harvest resources as well. But if they don't do anything against the robots, they'll definitely get the, the airfield objective from that. Now, on the other hand, I feel like cats, like I said before, have a big presence in Next Gen Bay and Warpaw here. Now, I feel like they could easily go for Libica, whatever that is. All right, they and Feral Fang, and then they just have a, and then they'll just have a three territory border here, and then they could even further on next turn focus on going for Carpal Coast and uh, whatever that is, and pretty much just end up with all the full control of Warpaw. And pretty much have a whole continent under your control, right next to your capital. And then I would imagine going for the surrounding territories around there as well. Now, for protection-wise of capitals, I feel like Red would have to take on... This whole uh, continent that they're on, Sim Sim whatever that island is... Uh, protection-wise for, uh, their capital, where is the... They pretty much probably go for all of Black Fort, but let's be honest, the way it functions for Black Fort, I feel like is the most defendable, as I feel like due to the mountainous range, due to the mountains and whatnot, I feel like you only need to defend this territory in this territory here, and you're all set. Now, I would say that this would be highly defendable with the capital here, but at the same point, you're going to get attacked more often, even though that's a choke point and they can only come through one, you're bound to be attacked more often. If the humans have this territory here, they're going to attack here, and if they get taken over, the, the person who comes in next is guaranteed to attack it because it has a capital. That is a high-value target that they want as well. So, after seeing all of what I have to say here, I feel like this is a pretty good scenario for the for the robots. Not so much for humans, but definitely for the cat. Cats have some stuff going for them. So, if you play your cards right, I feel like the, the, the robots are going to win out on top here. So now, if I exit this, not going to exit and save game. As I believe I already have a game saved. Now we're going to go to Farewell to Brains. Skip that. And we'll talk about what we're going to do now. Alright. So this is the... This is one of my... One of my... I think this is like my second favorite map here. Alright. Because it has multiple objectives. You can get cathedrals, you can take control of the missile. So this is really where the, t where the tactics come into play, and more so about focusing on objective, especially seeing as this is War Room, rather than just going for domination and trying to outnumber at the point of attack, because sometimes numbers don't matter. When you have so many objectives, it becomes the more... It becomes more of a question of who can outmatch at the point of attack. Because... Let's say you have five more troops than the enemy, but if they have attack bonuses, they have a thing that can freeze your border, prevent you from putting troops there, and they can constantly put troops there, and then a few turns later, they outmatch you. Boom, you're done. So, it's more so about objectives so much as it is about getting the territories to at least be able, and having the resources to even get said objectives as well. So, now let me familiarize myself with what... Uh, Continents we have, alright. I recognize this half of the board, because it's... Because this half of the board is, like, the first, um... Like, the first map that you play on. 
all the way up to here. And then I guess they just added these four onto uh, Black Ford, I guess. Um, so let me see here. So I feel like for zombies, let's look at what they have. They have stuff all along the bottom side, not, not that much on the top side, I guess. So obviously, this giant thing here will allow you to convert one one territory to your side. Now, this is a very powerful thing that you can do once per turn. Now, the reason why this is powerful is because not only can you make a surrounding territory or any territory on the map yours, but all the troops on that territory are yours. So, if they had 25 troops on the territory, that territory becomes yours with, 20, with 25 troops on it as well. Now, at the same time, I feel like... That's going to be hard, but um, you definitely have cathedrals here. And if you get a bunch of those early on, you can freeze territories. So you can expand a lot into one way and just freeze off a territory so that you don't have to worry about them attacking you for that turn. And then you can focus on rearming the other side and expand that side and then freeze one side. So that you can always expand to one side without worrying about opening too many borders as you can prevent that by freezing off some of the territories. In frozen territories, you cannot attack. They cannot be attacked, but nor can they attack from them, nor can they have troops be added to said territory. And you cannot have freeze in an opponent's last territory, which sucks, but then again, they wouldn't be able to take a turn anyway. And that's no fun. All right. So, humans, I'd say... Go for Gut Guttenrin and Skullshire Islands. Vaughn's Temple is really who can pour in the most uh the most resources into it. I think the cats are a bit far away to actually pour in anything to it, aside from the one territory they have right there. If anything, um he, the robots are right here so they can attack it and then you got humans right here. So um I think, uh, overall, to get control of this temple, I feel like the zombies have the best one because they already have ter uh, four territories connected here, and they can just send troops there. The red, the robot, sort the red, red side, have a territory here. They only have three here, which this one's surrounded by humans, so they can easily attack it. And they can... Pretty much are the biggest threat is the humans going after their territory. And they won't be able to supply it from other territories, such as the ones on Death Door here. Now, the reason that this is still there's still hope for the uh, robots is the fact that they could go for this one. But like I said, zombies have um have the best right now positioning for this. Now, I want to talk about missile-wise. I think all the missile, all the barracks are here. I think the cats have the best chance of getting that, especially seeing as they have a big presence here. They have all but, they have three out of five territories. And Garrison, and two out of four in Warpaw. But the thing is, is that they have two barracks, then the, um, then the robots have one, and then the zombies have the other. So in this case, they have the advantage here. But zombies have the advantage of getting the, of getting the altar, uh, so, so, uh, I have, the zombies have altar, I think cats have the barracks, Zombie, zombies do have one barracks, but, uh, I don't, if you want to play smart, though, I figured you want to build all of your troops onto one side, and then sweep over, which would be a little bit better. If anything, um, let's see here. Although, I feel like you'd lose it right away, this barracks early on. As the robots would want to expand near and around their uh, capital so that they don't lose it. In humans, let's see here. 
I have a capital, I mean, I guess it's somewhat defended well. I guess they're positioning with their islands up here and their location and headquarters for their uh, capital. I guess is the best thing that they can get, seeing as they're not um, ahead in terms of uh, getting uh, the missile um, or any of the temples to freeze. Actually, they start out with one, but... And so forth. So, I'd rank this zombies first, cats... Second, robots. Third, and humans last. They were last two times in a row. Oh, well. So, after seeing this, I'm going to exit game. Nope, not a custom game campaign. And let's look at Avalanche now. So we're playing as blue, and you start with less territories, and this makes sense for obvious reasons. All right. Now, objectives. We have starting maneuver. Control three crypts. Control an enemy capital. All right. Captures Vaughn Temple. All right. Airfield. Airfield, if you take over ten territories in one turn. That's usually something that's going to happen late game. I'll get into that. Complete three continents, you get defense die. You're better off doing the island hopping tactic. I'll go over that as well. Um, control two enemy capitals and control 26 territories for an attack line. All right, so let's get into this. Now, let's see. I'm first. All right. So now what am I going to do? Well, obviously, I want to see where my capital is. My capital. All right, my capital is here on Black Fort. All right, so Black Fort, uh, we have the majority control in Black Fort. I'd say just try and take control of Black Fort for protection um, and try and maintain control on Skullshire. And then once from there, I'd say go for all the surrounding territories. Probably go for the capital as they're going to put majority of troops there for the robots so that they can try and counter with... Um, then let's see here. Uh, trying to hold on to as many territories as you can here. All right. So now I feel like that's probably what you want to do starting with them. Starting with the humans. We'll go with them next. I feel like they're just screwed already. Because they are so spread out they can't really... They're going to lose territory in a lot of it. But at the, on the other side, is that, is that um, the fact that they're so spread out, they can launch mini skirmishes to weaken areas that they may want to attack later when they can afford to put in more troops. The only issue I have with this is that they're so spread out, you can't... Almost all of their territories are borders, and they all are attackable. Now, at the same time, I can say the same for the, or, uh, for the Yetis, which are blue. But, um, this is on a much worse area. Yes, I have some territory over here, on this side, on the right side, and on the left side. But, I have three on the, f on the far right, three in the middle. But, I have five on the left side of the map. And that's where I want to go and try and increase my strength and my power there. Whereas for the humans, yes, they have five on the right side, and they probably want to do the same. And they have two, and then they have a total of four on the right and in the middle total. But, I wouldn't count them out just yet with humans, as this is the primary way to get to all the other, all the other t territories. Korat? Um, is the only, is the place you have to go to if you want to go from Next Gen Bay to Warpaw, Silverstress, Kotata, and Simus, Simus, however you say that, because of their capabilities. Because of 
their capabilities to block all traffic. Now, if you want to travel to uh to Silver Stris Kotata or Simis, you could go through you could go through all the other islands. You could go through one of those other islands to get to the other ones, but if you want to travel off those islands, you'd have to go through Korat, the single territory here, which if you do get all of the crypts to freeze this territory, you can definitely restrict and limit movement for a good portion of the map. And that's going to be a key control central point in this scenario for this, which, starting out, humans have control of that, along with one crypt so far. It's actually not bad. For them. Now for the cats, they have four middle... T they have uh, four on the left side, actually. I'd say two middle, and then five on the right. Four on the right. So, uh... I'd say you'd either pick the left side... Or the right side, and try and reconnect with the middle territories you control where your capital is... And go from there. If anything, I'd go with the middle. Focus on middle and the left side. Because you can take these two territories. Finish off Death's Door. Try and finish off uh, two. This territory here and this one here. And next gen bay. Then I would go for this one here. And this one here that uh, the Yetis have. That way you can link all your territories and start to form an actual continent under your control, like a, a series of uh, different territories you have. They're all connected together, because the better connected they are, the better it is for maneuverability during your movement phase, and for and for your, um, in the long run, when you want to separate and make borders. Because once you take that out, you can easily take this out, and then you have absolutely no need to have additional troops on this territory here, and you'd only need it on this territory and this territory. So you gain two territories, and don't need to defend them. Then, um, with this one you don't need to defend, but you would need to defend this one, this one, and this one, but you're still gaining territory at that point. And let's just say you did take over Death's Door. Let's say you, if you do have this territory under your control, you do not need to defend that one, but you would need to defend this one and this one right here. So, now that we did that with the cats, let's take a look at what the zombies have. So, to begin with, they pretty much have Kotata under their control. Now, you're looking at this, and you see two territories in Kotata is under control of red. Two are controlled under by humans. One under Yeti, or blue, and then zombies have one. So why am I saying do they have the majority control here if they have the least amount of territories? Well, simply put, they have control of the dam here. If they decide to let it open and flood, because they both control, all extra troops in said territories can go bye-bye, and they can mine minerals. And let's see here. Do they have one to mine minerals? Control three crypts. Control enemy. Nope, they don't have one for mining minerals, but sometimes they do. And you can get that one easily. But not only that, it allows you to expand on this island here. And you don't need to protect three territories for border-wise, but at the same time... Uh, maybe not three if you assume that you keep control of this side of the dam. Now, at this point, you, you're you very good early on. But the thing is, is that you want to make sure you have control of one side of the dam. So that the start of the growth of your empire as zombies does not get thwarted very easily and very early on. Now, if we take a look here, zombies move last. That's... Zombies move last. So chances are you're going to lose one or both parts of, of 
of the dam, but don't worry. They have to do it at the beginning of their turn. So they can't take it over and have both sides of it and then do it mid-turn. They have to do it at the beginning of the turn. So next turn, they could activate it. So don't feel like you're, you're out of luck already. Although, they do have a strong... Um, they do have a strong control point in middle, which, by controlling Meow's corner right here, prevents them from getting to the, to the other side of Next Gen Bay, so they can sort of control that as well, because if you want to prevent, um, people from moving, you'd have to control, like, two different territories, but when you have Meow's corner... Pretty much locks it off, so you can't go past them, and so forth. So you have to have a territory on the other side and put troops there if you want to do that, or attack this directly, and so forth. Now, now I haven't talked much about cities yet, but I haven't gone over what the robots have, and then I'll talk about cities, as I do notice that that's going to be what we need to do. All right, so... Robots, once again, over by the temple is the best option for them as they have the highest concentration of territories. Um, let's see what their turn order is. So they're second to last. Uh, yeah. With, with the way that the best, what best interests, best suits the, the cats and the yetis, they're going to be off to a hard start to begin with. But, um... If they play their cards right, I think they can make a few good moves early on as well. Now, mainly uh, what I would do is try and go for this whole island that they're on, a Skullshire for their capital. Try and defend what they have on Death's Door. And this territory here allows a lot of movement of crossed water. So, controlling Liverside would be great. But at the same time, it's in the a very good interest of the Yetis to actually take control of this and make use of this. So I'd say probably if you're going to do that, I'd say if, if you don't think you're going to be able to hold on to that territory, i say go for a Gutterin. Gutterin, whatever you want to pronounce that as that will, as that one's like four territories. But uh, once you get the first three, the middle one doesn't count as a border, and I guess you're kind of good to go from there. Alright. So, I believe now we need to talk about cities. I believe there is two cities I see so far. So far, I've only seen two cities, and they only benefit the zombies. Now, yes, they move last, so, of course, this actually makes sense for them to have it, to balance it out. Now, what does a city and what purpose does it have? Well, it counts as a, a territory with a city, counts as two territories towards your overall drafting phase. Your drafting phase, you get one, one troop for each capital you hold, plus... Uh, continent bonuses plus bonuses from objectives and then territories which are for every three territories you get one troop and if you have two territories with uh with cities in them you technically count it as four towards your uh drafting phase but do not count towards your overall number of territories held on the map so that does not apply to crypts, temples, or barracks, as far as I'm concerned. As, in as far as I know at this point. So, I've been rambling on for like about, what, like 34 and a half minutes or so. So, I'm going to end off this video here now that I did the last three scenarios. And explain from not just the point of view of who you're playing as, but more so from what other people have as well. And how it affects how it, the key points on controlling certain areas to win the game. Anyway, uh, I'm 
I'm getting it off here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you, if you uh, could take the time to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below, it would be much appreciated. And I will see you guys later in another.